Hello everyone, let's take a look at our next problem. Show that the function f of x equals natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus one is an odd function, and then find the inverse of the function f. Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind for me is, uh, well, honestly, if I looked at this immediately, I wouldn't actually think it's an odd function. Um, but given that we're asked to show that it is, I mean, uh, the first thing is, you know, the argument of the logarithm we have to make sure is positive. Uh, so, you know, are there values of x for which the argument in the logarithm here uh, is negative? Um, let's just start playing around with some stuff. Let's look at this expression and uh, well, I know that x squared plus 1 is always greater than x. This is certainly true if x is negative, and it's true if x is positive. Uh, but I guess that's not really what we want. Um, well, this is greater than, this is then, of course, greater than negative x for the same reason. If x is positive, if x is positive, then this is true, this is obvious. If x is negative, then this will be a positive number. Uh, this will also be a positive number, but it'll be slightly larger than whatever positive number is over here, just by comparing, you know, I've taken x squared. If I didn't have this plus one, then these two things would be the same in magnitude, right? I have the square root of x squared. That has the same magnitude as x or as negative x. But given that I'm squaring it, then adding one, then taking the square root, this thing has a slightly larger magnitude than what is over here. Um, and so this equation is always true, which means the argument in the natural log, this expression, is always positive. Okay, so we don't have any problems with um, values of x for which our function is not defined. Let's write down exactly the function that we're looking at here. Um, So if I just try and do this directly from the definition uh, to show that this thing is odd, what I want to compute is f of negative x, and this is log of negative x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And again, when I look at this directly, this doesn't look like the negative of f of x. Right? We want to show that this is equal to the negative of f of x. I'll put a question mark here because um, you know we don't know this is true. This is what we want to show. But this doesn't look immediately obvious to me. Um, so uh, now what I'm thinking is maybe there's a way for me to factor, maybe there's a way for me to factor this as a product of two things such that it becomes more obvious. Um, more obvious that this thing is, uh, well, here's another thing I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to multiply the inside of this thing by, n no, if I multiply that by a negative, that, that won't work, that won't do anything. Um, maybe my mind will think of something if I write this just rearrange it and do it a little bit of a different way like that. Okay. Um, what I'm going to try is multiplying within the argument of the logarithm, uh, multiplying by one, but I'm going to multiply by one in a specific form. Uh, I'm going to multiply this by x squared plus one plus x divided by x squared plus one plus x, just to see what happens. Okay, so I'll have the logarithm. Uh, the numerator will become x squared plus one minus x squared divided by x squared plus one plus x. And I think this is gonna end up giving us what we want, okay? So 
the numerator now is just one and the denominator, this is what looks like the original argument to the logarithm function. So now we have some rules of logarithms. This will be the negative of log of x plus x squared plus one, which is of course negative f of x, right? If I look at this expression, that is the negative of the, the original function I had here. Uh, and so this chain of computations here is exactly the proof that this function f is odd. Um, so the next thing we're asked to do is to find the inverse function of f. Okay, well, let's rewrite the function f here. Okay, um, I always find the best way to do this when I'm trying to find an inverse function. Um, I'll replace f itself with x and I'll replace every occurrence of x over here with a y. Okay, and what we want to do now is we want to solve for y in terms of x. Um, so I'm hoping that a uh, straightforward algebra will allow us to do this. So e to the x is equal to y plus y squared plus one under square root. Um, I don't really see a very straight fair, straightforward way of solving for y here, but what I might try and do is use a similar uh, similar manipulation to what I did up here and just sort of hope that uh, things work out. So I have e to the x is equal to y plus y squared plus 1 y minus this root of y squared plus 1. Uh, I think this is not going to work, but let's just carry it out for a little while and see what happens. So in the numerator, uh, I should end up with just 1, right? Let's make sure. No, negative 1. And the denominator, y minus y squared plus 1. Yeah, that's not, this doesn't really help us in any way. I don't think. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What could I try now? Um, maybe I want to use the property that f is an odd function somehow. Maybe I want to, you know, I know that if I If I have f and I have f of negative x, those two things add up to zero. Does that help us in any way? Hmm. Uh, let's, for now, actually group, you know, kind of use the two of these things together. Uh, okay, so I'm going to rearrange this second equation. I'm going to write this as y minus the square root of y squared plus 1 is equal to negative e to the negative x. And this expression up here, I have e to the x is equal to y plus y squared plus 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, is, oh, here we go, yeah. I'm going to add these two equations together. And this term, which is the one that I think, uh, I feel like is giving me problems, is going to cancel out. Uh, so if I add these together, um, I now have 2y is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x. Uh, yeah, okay, so y is equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Cool. Uh, yeah, fairly good problem. Um, required, in, in both parts of this problem, it required us to sort of just mess around, experiment with things. 
Um, I really wasn't completely confident that this was going to work until I saw that the numerator turned into a one. Um, and yeah, I was, uh, you know, when I got to the point where I had this expression and this expression, um, I didn't immediately see that adding these together would cancel out the square root part of it. Um, and I almost gave up and tried something different, but, um, one more little experiment and we ended up getting what we wanted. Yeah. So good problem, sort of mediocre difficulty.